Welcome back to my channel. Today we're playing some more Pirate Warriors 4 and going to be talking about One Piece fan letter which came out like two days ago now at this point and I knew I was going to enjoy it anyways because I knew like the basic general idea of it that we we're going to see people from outside of the normal perspective of like basically civilians and marines and stuff like that and I knew the director was the same one who did uh, episode 1015 so I had high hopes for it but it blew out like Every single one of those. It was amazing. The new reanimated stuff that took place in Marine Ford looked absolutely beautiful. I honestly couldn't believe it. And I really liked... We mostly focused on, like, the brother who's inspired by Luffy and the girl who was inspired by Nami. I feel like those were more of our main characters in this one. And the other ones were more side characters that were doing stuff in the background. But we focused more on these two stories. Which I'm okay with, because they were honestly uh, some of the more interesting ones. I do really like they added stuff with like the people talking about the world's greatest swordsman, and basically like it was like a power scaling debate on Twitter or like Reddit or something, and it was just people talking about it. And you could see uh, like Zoro in the background laughing about it or getting angry about it. It was pretty great, and I really love what they did. And just like seeing the world from this perspective of not our main characters is really cool because we get a very skewed perspective of how things work in the one piece world because we are essentially pirates but we're like heroes I, luffy would hate that but he essentially is he goes from like kingdom to kingdom bringing freedom and like basically saving each kingdom he goes to or each location he goes to so there is that whole aspect that we don't really see. Like, we do see terrible pirates on, like, the villainy side. And, like, even Kid, who is a part of our group, was, like, destroying people and killing people. Uh, that's why his, like, bounty was higher than Luffy's at Sab Odi. But we don't really get to see that. And we don't get to see, like, the collateral damage. Like, seeing, like, when Mihawk and Crocodile clashed. And, like, they didn't give a single fuck about any of the, like, marines or pirates that are around them. They just, like, got caught up in the crossfire. And seeing stuff like that Marine get trapped under Or's leg after Doflamingo cut it off. And then getting freed when Luffy's ship comes crashing down. There's just so much cool stuff. And the shot where he's, like, about to leave his brother. And then he hears Luffy, like, coming into literally, like, the most dangerous place he could possibly go to to try and save his brother. And then he yells something like, I I'm your brother, or something like that. It made the Marine turn around and run and go save his brother. And there was some other cool shots of them fighting back to back. And then that was right before that uh, Crocodile Mihawk clash happened. But there was so much amazing stuff. And I also like that it brought up some characters like brought up Vista. Like because he doesn't get talked about a lot. Especially by the fan base. Except for like very few people. Like I know I feel what the one YouTuber is who really likes Vista. But there was a lot of cool stuff like that. And... A lot of uh, cool references to stuff on, uh, like, the Fisherman Island, like, Return to Sabote arc, like, after the post-time skip. Saying, like, all the people around. Also, like, how our main girl didn't recognize Usopp, because at that point, his wanted poster was still just of, uh, uh, Sniper King, or Soge King. So that was really funny as well, and I really liked how they showed, like, the straw hats around the place like Zoro was listening in the bar to that conversation like the power scaling stuff and then you got to see Nami at the very end when uh the girl like ripped up her letter and uh essentially pretended to save um and uh got the marines to not attack the straw hat ship while they were descending there was just so much amazing stuff and we got to see like Perona who was there and we got to see like Hercules's uh bugs were like a part of it we got to see like pacifistas there was so much cool stuff that actually happened they also reanimated uh luffy's one shot of the pacifista his jet pistol which is so clean i'm a little bit sad they didn't reanimate the too slow moment where he dodges the blast but it makes sense especially from the perspective how we got it but it was really cool seeing it from another pr perspective of someone watching the attack happen it also seemed, like, really fast. I love how Luffy, like, glided up and then, like, one-shot it. And the animation on it was really clean. And then also starting next week, we do got the Fishman Island stuff. Uh, like, the remake or slash remaster starting, which I'm really excited for. And this 
uh, OVA or special episode tied in, like, perfectly to that, because it's, like, they're leaving to setting off to Fisherman Island in this, and I know, like, the light novel it's based off of, it wasn't exactly like that, like, I'm pretty sure all the side stories took place at different places around the world in the One Piece, like, I know, I think, like, the power scaling one with, like, Zoro and the bar was in Dressrosa, but they moved it all to Sabote, and it actually worked really well, and I liked how it tied in all the characters, and, like, the stuff with the puzzle pieces of everyone, like, coming together to end up, uh, saving the day at the end was really cool. Like, when the Brook fanboys and the Frankie friend, well, fangirl and fanboys, uh, came rushing in to save the Nami-looking girl. I forget if we got her name? I feel like we must have. But, uh, I can't remember the girl's name off the top of my head. It looks like Nami, and, uh, I've, I don't know. There's so much cool stuff, and... For being like a short 23 minute episode or something, I think they did perfect, especially showcasing like all the different side stories and them coming together, and it was honestly a perfect thing, like cause even last episode of One Piece, like we, we finished the Kobe and Garp stuff side story, I was like man this is a perfect spot to end One Piece for the 6 month break. And then we got this and it was like even better of an ending point, and it ties into the remastered episodes. I think with One Piece is finally, like, actually listening to what the fans want and, like, the kind of things that uh, the fan base wants. Because hopefully, when One Piece returns now, they'll be in a time slot where the censorship is less of an issue. There'll be a bunch more episodes and, like, manga chapters, uh, so they won't have to have such bad pacing. Even though pacing has been much better in Egghead, and they're continuing taking a break i imagine so they can keep up this quality of animation especially during like the really hype moments but i'm so excited and i honestly don't mind a break for one piece especially because i'll still be reading the manga like weekly and i'll get my fill from that but it'll give me some time to catch up on some other shows because i there's quite a lot that i actually want to catch up on right now or i'm also behind on like last seasons of anime still like last season still so I'm trying to catch up on that so I can make a video about all my favorite shows from last season and then make a video on what I'm watching all this season, but that'll be something coming in a couple days or something like that. I've been a little more focused on content the last little while, especially just because there's been so much coming out. Like, we've had all this One Piece news and new stuff, and then we had Dragon Ball Daima coming out and Sparking Zero coming out, which I can't play yet, but is a thing that's out. And I also have some other games I've been wanting to upload on my channel, so I think now will probably be a good time to start that. And now that One Piece is kind of on a break, I can uh, do some videos about some topics on One Piece that uh, I might not have focused on because it was ongoing and there's like new stuff every week to talk about. So I might go over some old, old topics or go over some other shows or stuff, but... Uh, we're just in such a great place for anime at the moment, I feel. Like, we have so much good stuff coming out. Especially if you're a fan of, like, uh, shounen anime. Because we got, like, Bleach is back. One Piece, I guess, is going on break. But it's, like, really great at the moment. And then, uh, Dragon Ball is also back. Fairy Tail is back. Which I need to catch up on the first, or final season. Well, under your quest. I finished the final season a little while ago before it, uh came out and then I fell behind on other shows before I could catch up to the new fairy tale stuff. But there's just so many good shows coming out and like we got the remaster of Fishman Island coming which I'm really excited about because it'll compress 51 episodes into 21 and it'll have improved like art style which I'm really excited to see all of that and how it uh, ends up turning out. But I think that'll be all for this video. I don't have too much else I want to talk about I don't think. But uh, that'll be all. Catch you guys all later and peace.